This is Shudders Inc. with Bruce Williams and Glenn Lavender. Hi, and welcome to episode 521 Hi. of Shudders Inc. This is Bruce Williams from ShuddersIncPodcast.com, and interrupting me, as usual, it is Mr. Glenn Lavender from CreativePhotoWorkshops.com.au. How are you? Well, sorry, I, I, just, I thought you just said hi, like saying hi to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there is that too. How's your last two weeks been? Well, before we get onto that, yeah. I had a revelation about 10 minutes ago. All right. This, this thought that came to my head about our podcast. I'm scared already. Yeah. And why And why it's not sort of, I don't know, not popular, shall we say. Like oh, okay. Stop, yeah. Well, we, and I've, I've, I've kind of nutted it out. Is it, I realised. Is, is it because we don't care enough? <laughs> There's several points. That was what I had. That's what I hadn't taken into account. Um, but maybe it should go to the top of the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, I, I just realised that. Well, we don't actually give out any information. Like we what? don't actually of any use. <laughs> we don't actually, yeah, educate anything. Yep. We don't enlighten anybody. Yep. So basically, what we're expecting people to do is come and listen. For our personalities. <laughs> that was always doomed to failure. <laughs> exactly. There it lies. Bang. There it is. So all we have to do, Bruce, yeah. is change our personalities <laughs> and this podcast to you through the roof. Right. I thought you were going to say is change our personalities and there'll be absolutely zero reason to listen and we can all go home. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I think I figured we could only get better. I wasn't quite sure it was possible to get worse. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. So, yeah, so that, that that was that was quite a surprise to me. <laughs> right, excellent. Uh, uh, the, 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 you, know, you know, it has Seinfeld's a show about nothing. Yep. Well, you know, but it's not because it's full of stuff. Yeah. Our podcast is a podcast about nothing, but it's actually about nothing. It doesn't, it's not full of, it was full of something, but it's not full of stuff. <laughs> so, we do occasionally know, have something useful. Accidentally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well when we have other guests on. <laughs> there, there is that. Speaking of which, I, there's, a, there's a guy called Scott I want to get on. Um, I haven't asked him yet. Okay. But, uh, who's uh, just started working at a new uh, artificial intelligence imaging company. Ooh. Um, you know, doing stuff for, um, you know, batch, you know, group photographers and wedding photographers and, you know, it's all about streamlining editing process for large jobs. So right. I thought they could be an interesting person to have a chat to and talk about what's happening. You, you keep on mentioning all these people that we should have on the podcast, but you never organise to get them actually... Oh, I do. I have, I have them on my other podcast, the Actually Good Photography <laughs> Podcast. Right. That's at actuallygoodphotographypodcast.com. That makes sense. Um, no personality, <laughs> all information. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Uh, we should get him on. And, well, yeah. If you should remind me who else I said we should get on, we should. Get uh, on. You mentioned Dennis Smith many years ago. We could get Dennis on. You You've mentioned on. Cam Blake a few times. Well, he's a bit of a tosser, but um, <laughs> we could have him. He's had a big. He's had a big bunch of fights this week with people online. Oh, so has he's, he? He's, he's, uh, <laughs> there's been a flaming war against him. You know, right? He's a strong. He's a strong personality. Our Cam Blake. He's, okay. Uh, yeah, he, he's short and, and he's, he's a feisty little guy. You know, you know short people are. You know, they, you know, they're like, you know, they're so tall. Right. Um, but I'm not heightest. Don't do don't, 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 that. that uh, did, you ever see, did you ever see that goodies episode where they're re- re- recruited by, by the English government to um, promote England as a place to go on holidays to the South Africans? Right. Okay. I don't. And it doesn't they, ring a bell. They, well, they did. They did this. 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 This episode, and it was such a success that all the native South African black people left South <laughs> Africa to move to go and live in England. Right. Yeah. So all of a sudden, this is back in the seventies. All of a sudden, yeah, the 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 white South Africans have got no one to, to no one to work for them. They've got no 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 class to rule over as they did in those days. So they kidnapped the goodies and made them come up with a new system and they came out with apartheid. 
Right. It's an apartheid. So Biggins and Littlands. Right. <laughs> and the Littlands became the new slave class. <laughs> and the Biggins became the new ruling class. Oh, okay. So, of course, Bilotti being short and the other two being tall. Yeah. It was, uh, I thought it was such a clever, a clever play on words, apartheid. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, so once again, I'm uh, just... Uh, Bring us back to something semi-relevant. I'm not. A, I'm not heightist. But mind you, I am over six foot. So maybe saying that is like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I shouldn't. Maybe I, have, I haven't lived in the, a shorter person's shoes to be able to make that commentary. Maybe I am subliminally heightist. Right. Yeah. You because know? you know the problem of being heightist, Bruce, is you tend to look down on people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Boom boom. So, how's your last couple of weeks been? Oh, uh, sure. You're not bad. Are the girls not back been... at school? Well, um, somewhat. <laughs> yeah, so, so I can't remember. What was my other one um, back to homeschooling? Uh, the youngest uh, the, one. The last thing I remember was uh, one of the schools being closed down because there was a COVID case in class like two days That's after it. they so went So, she was locked out. She was locked down for 14 days. Right. Which changed, uh, as often is the case, the uh, the rules about what you can and can't do and where you can go changed about two thirds of the way through. Oh, so right. she was only locked down for about ten days. Oh, okay. So so she managed to go back to school Monday, just gone. It's Wednesday today we're oh, cool. recording, and by Wednesday I mean Thursday. Yeah. Uh, so she just went back on Monday, which is great. Yep. And on Monday afternoon we got a message from the other girls' school: we're closing down because. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> Because of COVID cases. So, oh. but it was fortunately only closed down for one day. Wow. Uh, for cleaning. So, but out of her school, 13 classes are in isolation at the moment. Whoa. And it's only just a matter of time until you get the email slash yep. phone call slash, yeah, your kid. And yeah. Yeah, so wow. So my, my eldest daughter actually took two days off school the end of last week. Right. Because she was going away on camp this weekend, just gone, mm-hmm. and she was desperate not to have to isolate because some person somewhere did the wrong thing. Yep. So she she removed herself from, from any potential danger from circulation. Yep. Yeah. So she could go out and go camping, which is good. So she went out and had a nice uh, camp up in the bush. Awesome. With scouts for a couple of days, which is uh, which is nice. Yeah, lovely. And um, yeah. And I, and I I went for a bit of a drive in the country. No, nice. I saw I saw two I've seen two foxes in the last three days, which is kind of unusual. Yeah, right. Yeah, you don't see them in the daytime that often. And one one feeding, one they're running down across the road with food in its mouth. And right. Another one hunting. But uh, so I've seen a lot of foxes and that's probably about the I don't know, fifth or sixth one I've seen in six months and I haven't seen one in years. Yeah, right. So it's kinda of weird that all of a sudden in the daytime there's so there's maybe there's a change of behaviour or who knows what. Mm. Is there a, a nocturnal hunter usually, Bruce? And yeah. By nocturnal I mean at night. Yes. Yeah, exactly. it's both. They do both. They're night and nocturnally. Right. Um, so yes, that's been good. I've been I've been putting together my itinerary for India and nice. tweaking and adjusting and I think I finally settled on myself, which I think is probably the best tour ever I've put together. Right. Uh, which is awesome. That's the best the best it just happens that events line up time wise where you can do multiple things that are really darn cool. Um, so, so that's if that all comes together well, that'd and be awesome. Which month and which year are you optimistically so aiming at? It's yeah, <laughs> optimistically somewhat <laughs> October into November next year, so 2022. Nice, so basically a year from now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and nice. um, for the Pushcar Camel Fair, yep, which uh, every self respecting photographer who likes photographing people just has to go to at least once in their life, yep. Um, and uh, Dev Diwali on uh, in Varanasi, which is right. quite remarkable. But I'm also going out for the first time in many, many years, uh, going out in the Great Rand of Kutch, okay. which is the the great desert between India and Pakistan. Uh, and by desert, it's not like sand dune desert. It's like yeah, barren, empty wastelands, but like Australia's just, just gravel and rocks. Well, it's it's. it's Dirt and sandy, but it's not like Dooney. Yeah, you know right. I mean? okay. yeah. Uh, but we're going. One of the reasons to go down there is a to experience something you, not many people get to do. Yep. Um, but to go out into the uh, into the middle of the desert, into uh, these salt flats where people mine for salt. Oh wow! In this grueling existence, living in the middle of this massive expanse of nothing, and they yeah they sit there. 
daily have to you know, scrape away at salt and you know, pour out water and you know, watch it dehydrate and then scrape up all the salt and yeah, right. A, um, a brutal existence, but an amazing thing to see. So yeah, that's that's going to be really would, good. So I would imagine that would be quite a dark sky area too, if you're into your astro stuff. Oh yeah, amazingly dark. Yeah, could you yeah. be a gazillion miles from any light source? Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, they maybe they should do something this time around. They've only been there one bit once before, and we didn't do any, and you know, I think we're all too tired and lazy. But um, <laughs> yeah, there might be an opportunity, depending yeah. on the moon phase at the time of year. Actually, yeah. well, just kind of think. Well, see, Dev Diwali, which should be about a week and a half later. That's full moon, right? So it might have, yeah, it might have a bit of. That would actually work really well because it would mean you'd have like a quarter moon to provide a little bit of light on yeah. the landscape. And it might set it easy, early enough to uh, to allow some darkness as well. Mm. So there's some opportunities. So that's yes. going to be pretty epic. And uh, speaking of young Cam Blake, hopefully he'll be co-chairing it with me. Oh, nice. And uh, come along and uh, and running it. Cool. So, Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. Just waiting for all the costings to come back in, and they're, and they're all confident. They're saying, "Look, India's opened up. It's you know, the flights are back internally. The all the resorts are back open and stuff." So, yeah, yeah, they're all fairly confident. And hopefully, you know, twelve months from now, you know the the ability to get through airports, and you know, hopefully, the prices of you know flights have come down a bit, and you know, it's all sort of returned a little bit to. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, and, and the, um, yeah, the, this thing like this pill, you can take a pill instead of being vaccinated that's coming out. Right. And, um, yeah, things like the rapid tests and, and, yeah, the ability to, yeah, to travel without such onerous restrictions yeah. or whatever. Hopefully, yeah. it'll all have changed. So, yeah. We'll, we'll see all that as it comes around. So it'll be a, a whole a whole new world. Nice. But, uh, but I'm teeing up with my good mate Umesh Mal, who's my, uh, my, favourite guide over there, so he's a top bloke and uh, he's had a bloody tough time the last uh, two years having not a, not a jot of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, I think he's saying he's, uh, in the last two years he's earned 45 Australian dollars. Wow. In income. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and they just sold off his wife's family jewels, family heirlooms, wow. to be able to afford to send their daughter to school and to keep paying bills and food and stuff, so... Uh, so that's, that's pretty bleak, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm hoping to sometime in the next couple of months put together a uh, a limited edition print run of say twenty prints. No, what one print, tw- twenty copies, one you know, numbered, signed, uh, to sell as a fundraiser for him. Yeah, nice. And send that money off uh, off to him just to kind of yeah. Yeah, just do the right thing by people, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, never done anything like that before. So, it'd be uh, not uh, yeah, the logistics of getting it all printed and shipped and costs and all that sort of stuff are, have to be outweighed to make sure the you can sell them at a price that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, to ensure they sell, and uh, at a point that's also high enough that you get some value that they get, yeah, you know, at least yes, three or six months worth of income, yeah, you know, ability yeah. to live. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Anyway, we'll stay tuned for that and see what comes out. Nice. So I've been editing a bunch of photos as well as cool. I'm going through stuff. So I've been, you know, pulling out some old photos. You know, I put one up yesterday. I found one out and edited one from uh, Myanmar of some balloons yesterday. Right. That I really like. It was like, oh, that's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> and so that was, that was um, yeah, nice, a nice pleasant surprise. Yep. But uh, it's got so many photographs that, yeah, you just don't ever get to look through and, you know, yep. Sitting there with time on your hands, it's uh, a good thing to do. Yeah, for sure. Since 2005, Shutters Inc. has been a labour of love. But beyond the time required to produce it, there is also a financial commitment. If you find value in the podcast and would like to help keep the servers running, hit up the Patreon link, which is in the show notes. Even a couple of dollars a month will help. Much appreciated. Now, back to the podcast. 
And what about yourself? What have you been up to the last couple of weeks? Uh, just driving the truck, doing my work. Um, well, how can we finish so early today? What time do you finish? I f- actually finished early today. Like, I started at 6 and I was finished by 11. So, wow. <laughs> it was a very well, short that's day. That's pretty good. It was a very short day. So I can uh, handle days like that. Yeah, four hours, yeah. Three, three, three or so, two or two and a half hours or so. It's two, it, well, hour and a quarter. It, it, yeah, yes and no. Like, I prefer the eight or nine hour days, and then I only need three days a week. Oh yeah, you yeah, know when you when you've got five yeah. hour days, you you sort of need to work five days. So <laughs> yeah, no, that yeah, no, yeah, it's no, it's no. yeah, swings and roundabouts. So you know, I it, it's great to have the longer days and have less days in the week because it then yeah. means I've got you know three or four days to myself. But likewise, it's also nice to work a short day and be able to be home by lunchtime and have the rest of the yeah. day to myself. So yeah, sort of kind of yeah, yeah. Maybe so, a mix is all right then. Yeah. Um, we've been speaking with Max. Oh, and, yes. Uh, he, oh, man. Who's Max? <laughs> exactly, my son. Uh, <laughs> He's it, gone now, dude. Just it doesn't absolutely count. blown both Kath's and my mind just how much he's changed just listening to him over the phone. Really? Like, he's just so in the zone. He is absolutely... Just a quick just a quick question. Are you sure you're talking to him? Well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, he's ringing on Max's phone. Uh, yeah, he's got a mate to do it, though. Yeah. Hey, I can't stand talking to these people. But, do, do it for me. But, uh, yeah, not once has he complained, oh, you know, this is too hard, I can't do this, or anything like that. Wow. It's like... No, there's there's yelling. There's the, you know they're, they're always yelling at us, but it's only for twelve weeks, and this isn't what the army will be like. And he's just just enjoying it. You can hear it in his voice. He's absolutely oh, loving God. it. So, um, and he he'll be home in three weeks. We're like, what? Jesus, already? No, because they're breaking. Oh, it up. Christmas break. Yeah, yeah right. so it, he'll have. He's done five weeks. He's got three more weeks, and then he'll be home for two weeks over Christmas, and then he goes back for the last month. But yeah, as I said to Kathy the other day, I, I can't wait to see him at Christmas time because it's just going to be a completely different person to who he was when he left. You know. But well, I hope you like him. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Who's this Pratt? Yeah. Uh, I think the the Pratt will be gone. I think it'll be more like you know. He's a young man now, you know. It's well, gonna be stuff. gonna be interesting, yeah. So that's well, exciting to watch, isn't it? It yeah. is. It is very much exciting. So uh yeah. So that's been the last couple of weeks for me. So wow. just yeah. Just plugging yeah. away and uh feeling like I'm on the verge of wanting to start doing my dark table stuff again, you know. It's Oh good. Because uh, now say cause yeah, between the two of us, we need a pretty bloody Boring existence oh, when you, yeah. when, you when we surmise it like we just did. Yeah, absolutely. What if you done nothing? What if you done nothing? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, so I am looking. You forward. two listeners could live a life of luxury like <laughs> us. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, not a not a whole lot of progress on Dad's will. A little bit, oh, but God. not a lot. Um, I told you about the debt, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, um, uh, but I, uh, it turned out that Dad had uh, estate planning in place, right. which is basically like a, you know, an agreed upon value that will be paid out upon his death. And uh, I was talking to them on the phone yesterday, and uh, they said, well, you've paid this much money for, you know, the storage of the body and the transport of the body and the cremation of the body, uh, but there's another $2,300 in the policy that is uh, surplus to what you've already paid. And I said, yes, but I haven't finished with the expenses yet because I can't go to Western Australia to bury him. So at some point, I'm going to have more expenses related to this. And they yeah. said, and I said, can you can you pay that excess into my bank account? And they said, well, does he still have any active bank accounts? Because that's what we normally do. We put it into his bank account. And I said, well, yeah. I don't want that to happen because the moment you put that money into his bank account, it's going to go towards paying off his debt. Of course. And that's not fair on me because I've still got costs to incur. And she went, okay, well, let me have a chat with my supervisor and 
we'll see if we can have it paid into your account. And then I got an email later in the afternoon yesterday saying, yep, we've just paid all of the money into your account. I was like, oh, thank Oh, that helps a bit. That's a one, one tiny win in all of this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Parents, who'd have them? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, fun and games. So what have you got oh, on I your ju- list? I, I just, just one last thing I just remembered. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah that last, last week, um, last Tuesday night, I went out for dinner for the first time. In the city, went out for dinner in the city with my sister to celebrate our 50th year of, of arrival in Australia. Wow. Congrats. Yes. No, no, it was, it was a pretty, a pretty, yeah, took a photo of mum and dad long, put them on the table. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a woman, <laughs> the poor waitress goes, oh, couldn't they join you? And I thought, no, nah, they're dead. <laughs> she goes, oh, oh, didn't know quite how to handle that. Uh, yeah, they've, they've, they eat a lot less since, since, uh, since they died. Uh, <laughs> I but, take but, them out for so, everywhere now. <laughs> so we went, uh, we went into, into the city and had this lovely dinner and it went to an English pub because I figured that's kind of a pretty nice. thing. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, and uh, Ordered the food, and the only one that could go was me and my eldest, because my youngest was isolating, and yep. my wife had stayed book, so they two of us went. <laughs> and um, she goes, "Oh, don't, don't forget to scan the QR code to get your money back, get your cash back." I'm going, "What cash back?" She says, "Oh, the government's paying twenty five percent of your bill." Nice. Well, it might have been thirty percent. Anyway, so thirty uh, percent. So you scan this code, and you get thirty percent of your bill back. Which like beautiful, it's bloody marvelous. Trying to promote. People going back and eating in the city. Yeah, New South Wales did it a little bit differently. They gave us vouchers to the value of $25. Uh, yeah. And you got two that you could use for dining and two that you could use for entertainment. So you basically, everyone got $100 worth of vouchers uh, across these four. Well, this, this you can use multiple times over multiple restaurants oh, nice. over multiple days, up to the value of 150 each time. Man, that's awesome. So, yeah, you go out every night and eat. <laughs> and the government yeah, just keeps paying you to do it. Yeah. Far more generous than New South Wales. Well, I think they did vouchers too on one of in between one of the other bunches of lockdowns. I know we got travel voucher for I can't remember how much to, to go out to into rural Victoria and stay somewhere for and spend X amount of money over X amount of days and they gave you I think it was like two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars back or something. Right. Um, so yeah, so we did that. So uh, and we always go away at a particular time of year anyway and stay at the same motel and it always cost us about seven hundred bucks and this time it cost us like four. So nice. So it was a bit of a bonus. But yeah, and then they do the, the. I'm sure they did a dining one as well, and they did multiple rounds of that accommodation one too. So yeah, right. For all the people who complain about our government, they do a damn lot to try and keep, keep as best as they can, over. keep things yep. going. Yeah, yep. yeah, and promote you know regional and now in a in a, in a city. Yep. Uh, businesses. So yeah, nice. Not a job I'd like to do. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, let's, let's get on to crap some photography. On about some photography for a while because apparently that's what this podcast is about. <laughs> it's meant to be. <laughs> what do you got on yeah. your list? None. What is no, Sony ceasing production of? Sony is ceasing production. That's my dramatic headline. I, I, I thought I'd take a leaf out of uh, the hit newspapers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dramatic headline that's not necessarily overly relevant to the actual content of the story. <laughs> it's the Murdoch report. But yeah, but it, but it does it does clickbait and drag your attention. Well, they are somewhat uh, quitting pr- the production on things like the A7 twos, yep. the 6400s. Right. Um, Both uh, of which the, would be old cameras by now. Yeah, but it's, it's, which is interesting that they're still making them, though. Yeah. Not when you think about that, then, you know. Um, if, they're, if they're still they're still deciding, oh, these are products that should be, yeah, there's a market force in some part of the world. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they're, they're and... Um, Strange, it shows you how weird this whole chip shortage is. A microphone. They have, one of the things they had to stop making is a microphone. Wow. Because they can't get the chips for that. Mm. And one of their uh, video cameras, I think, as well. So it's had to be stopped being made right. for the time being. So it's a, it's a crazy world, isn't it? Yeah. You know? I've never seen anything... Well, there was that shortage, slight shortage on cameras uh, after the tsunami... After Fukushima, and, you mean? Yeah, after Fukushima, those issues they had there, and and I think there's some problems in Thailand at the same time as well that caused disruption to yep. to to manufacture. So that was a couple of years ago. There was certainly something there, but nothing quite like this. And you think, well, yeah, you know, Sony make their own chips, just make more. I'm just 
I'm just thinking, you know, Fukushima would have been about 2011. 2011. That's yeah. 10 years ago. Oh, and that was a month before my youngest daughter what? was born. What? That's insane. We were, we were having our last last weekend away before the next kid came along. Wow. And uh, we book, booked in this bed and breakfast and just got in, sat down, turned the TV on. There's this horrendous you know, the tidal wave happening. It's like, oh, my God, yeah. So, um, wow. yeah, I remember it very clearly. March 2011. I, March man, 2011, that blows yeah. me away. And my daughter's born April 2011, so I remember it so clearly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, anyway, so it's interesting. To, so if you, uh, the, the, if you want to order one of those old cameras, <laughs> bad luck. Yeah. Order a newer version. They'd probably prefer it anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the, the, the one thing I did find interesting, though, is, is, is the next thing along, is that Canon um, are providing lenses to this thing called the Dragonfly Telephoto Array. Wow. And they did some a few years ago. They provided 48 400mm 2.8 lenses yeah. uh, to go into this, to be all basically glued together into one great big um, dragonfly or fly type lens, which is wow. multiple, multiple eye. Uh, uh, and this uh, time it's holes. 120 of them. And adding another 120 to it, yeah. Wow. But if you look down, if you look down at the article, at the detail of images they're getting out of this damn thing. Whoa. There's a shot of what the moon to scale and then the size of the sky that they capture and the detail that they capture. Wow. So it picks up all this incredibly fine nebulous gas and stuff that wasn't that's not normally recorded by telescopes. Yeah, right. And so with the with the extra 120, it'll be the wide it'll be the most powerful wide field spectroscopic line mapping machine in existence. Wow. And the major goal is to detect and study faint gas thought to exist around and between galaxies. Wow. And it's, it will uh, uh, tackle some of the most critical questions in astrophysics by learning to see the connections and all this stuff between wow. objects in the universe. Yeah. Wow. I was saying, we've said it many a time in this podcast, what a time we live in that. This yeah. Incredible technological breakthroughs and... and it's just, yeah, abilities to do and see stuff that's just never, ever been done before, you know? Exactly. And, and, yeah, and then I just thought I'd just that second click on um, on uh, on the comments. And the first one, <laughs> nice way to get some residual value with a lens that nobody is buying anymore. <laughs> and Can- Canon has gathering dust in a storehouse. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 there's always one, isn't there? <laughs> Yeah, I would posit that Canon reached out to them and said, hey, we've got some lenses, 50% discount if you get 100 or more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just just people, yeah. And then next person said, exactly, nobody wants the old stuff, so we try and market this as support for science. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Bloody pe- people, they're just... just... <laughs> yeah, I had a look at... Uh, there was a DP review uh, thing on uh, the new Tamron 35 to 150 f2 2.8. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I'll just see the comments. And I turned and I went, oh, just. <laughs> yeah. One guy, it was like, oh, I prefer the I prefer uh, colour signs from brands that I trust and blah, blah. And just oh. on about utter crud. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, whatever, do Just go yeah. sit in the corner with all your friend. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, I thought anyway. I thought that was, a, was a, regardless of why they're giving them the product. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, then I came up with a Christmas gift for someone. Okay. Christmas gift for people living in cold climates, which okay. is yeah, at least one person in our audience. Yeah. You would think <laughs> so. Maybe they want to buy this, but it's a twenty dollars USB powered lens wrap uh, that stops your lens from fogging up in the cold. Nice. So it's, it's it's like a yeah, it's an anti-fog belt. It goes around the outside of your lens and kind of basically keeps your your lens warmed. Oh, so it's great. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, you know, what a clever little idea, you know. If and, you've ever uh, been in that situation where you your lens fogs because you've taken it out of a warm camera bag yeah. into a cold climate, and then you've got to sit there for fifteen minutes waiting for the temperature to equalise. It's it's so frustrating. And you get the opposite in, in hot and humid climates, of course, as well. And you go yeah, from right. your hotel room yep. outside. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, I, uh, I, I was I was doing some commercial photography uh, uh, two or three years back, uh, shooting uh, kids at soccer 
for a, a photographer here on the Central that, Coast. Yeah. And I remember getting to the soccer ground, and it was the middle of winter, because you know, it's soccer season, of course, yeah. and, you know, pull my camera out and start shooting, and then suddenly the lens fogs up, and, you know, for 10 minutes I really couldn't do anything because I was waiting for it to settle down and yeah, you exactly. know, defog. You can't, that's why you, if you're travelling in winter, you should keep it in the boot of your car, yep. not in the... Not in the cabin, because yep. if you have your heater on the cabin, it's going to cause problems. Yep. And conversely, if you're in hot conditions, like in a hotel room, yep. um, I always keep my um, my camera bag in the bathroom. Because right. the bathroom is rarely air-conditioned ah, until, okay. until you go in there. Uh, and so it keeps the temperature much more stable. So you just go straight from that warm room outside, and you're usually pretty good. So there's two tips. Yeah, put, it in your, put it in your boot slash trunk. Or put it in your bathroom. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, sh- hang on a sec. We might have to rename this podcast. That was, that was useful information. We just handed that just then. <laughs> I did say we get, some, we, we, we get some useful stuff every now and again. Oh, plenty of mistakes. <laughs> what, what, ha- what happened to that job as a soccer photographer? COVID was it? Or? Uh, no, I it just it, it went away at the end of the season, and I yeah, certainly course. never pursued it the following year because I didn't particularly enjoy it. What? That doesn't sound like fun to you. <laughs> I could have saved you the time there for my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you will go and do say yes to these things without asking me first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the last thing I've got on my list is, an, oh no, I've got two more things. Yeah. One I haven't read. Right. So, uh, but I thought it, it piqued my interest enough to say, well, because I was time poor before the podcast started, yeah. uh, I'm going to go back and actually read it after. Okay. But it was uh, how to create and sell NFTs for free, okay. rather than paying the minting costs and everything. So, yeah, right. Um, yeah, which is which is good. So if someone wants to have a dabble into NFTs, but go, oh yeah, I don't want to spend thirty, fifty, eighty bucks to try one out. Maybe this is an option to try something and uh, and get it out there and see what happens. Yeah, so at no cost. Interesting. But the last one, the last thing, which is back to space again, was the world's largest resolution camera is almost ready to uh, to start. So it's a um, wow. what is it? It's a two point, uh, no, three point two gigapixel telescope. Wow. For shooting space, space. Uh, it's called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time. Yeah, Look right. at that ambitious, ambitious bloody titling. Yeah. Space and time. Sounds like something out of Doctor Who. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, but again, who knows what this thing's going to be able to see and shoot, you know. Yeah. But who knows what on earth we'll... So, so they're going to be able to uh, look further in the distance than ever before to learn more about the cosmos. It will image nice. half of the southern sky every three days. So, now, I noticed this is, is being built in Chile. Yes. Was Arecibo... Was that Chile? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right. So did they plan this to replace the Arecibo scope? No. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> you have no idea, do you? <laughs> uh, I, I, they, 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 I think you'll find they, they don't do the same task. Fair enough. So I would, I would say, well, oh, somebody at the door. Not that that many matters, but... Um, did you want to go I was and get expecting- it? No, no, no. I was, I was expecting a. Uh, I saw the uh, parcel was supposed to be tried to be delivered yesterday, and no one was home. So we've left notification how to pick it up, and uh, well, people are home all day, and there's no <laughs> notification. So it's like and it's cat's Christmas presents, <laughs> so, right? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So anyway, that that, that telescope I is again another another pretty pretty amazing amazing thing and chilly of course because it's um dark skies high yep. mountains yep um yeah and yeah pretty arid weather so yeah yeah so it's going to be ready in january 2023 so another year of year of a bit prep and hey pretty cool stuff so nice. that was it nice so I got, actually, well i got a content. couple of emails from paul sutton over the last couple of weeks did you really and I, I actually liked both of these, Paul. Thanks, mate. Oh, what? Yes. Did you? Did, does that include the one that uh, that uh, Joe 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 Edelman did a shout out to us? No, this is this is two different things. Well, the third thing he said then is because he he made a comment on Joe's thing, and then Joe Joe wished as well. Ah, oh, good on you, Joe. Uh, and I'd like to say the same to him. <laughs> I know you well enough to know where that's going. <laughs> 
So the first of these two is <laughs> wedding photographer reveals three red flags that suggest a marriage is destined to fail. Uh, I think if any marriage is going to have buying red flags as a priority, that's... <laughs> I'm not sure the thing they're going to use those for. So number one is if one spouse takes a lot of photos with their family that don't include their new spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fair. The second yeah. is bridesmaids or groomsmen who don't talk about their friend's new spouse, often because they don't like them, which I thought was really? interesting. And the third, if one of the newlyweds spends more time with their friends and family at the reception than with their new bride or groom. So which is kind of related to the first one. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was very interesting. And I would imagine, you know, if you've been out shooting weddings for years and years and years, these are probably the little things that you would start to notice over time mm. that, you know, most people wouldn't even pick up on. I'd certainly never considered it, but I, I can imagine that, yeah, you, you would start to notice those trends over time. And you would know, you know, that your your past clients, you know, only lasted X number of years or months or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> and then went their separate ways. So yeah, I thought it was an interesting, uh, interesting little story. Uh, but the other one that Paul sent us, he said that his mate Seng in WA, who you know, my mate Seng, yeah, your mate Seng, uh, my mate before was your mate. He, he shared this with Paul, and this is just a fantastic collection of images i absolutely love these photographer spots curious coincidences on new york city sidewalks this was on petapixel and they're just really clever bits of composition uh and there's just some absolute crackers in this collection i i really love the the one of the ivy growing in the corner adjacent to the chipped paint which is about four or five images down yeah there's a, there's a nice one of a car on a piece of road and there's a it's shot through a, a mesh fence and the mesh is all warped right where the car is and the car's been shot with a slow shutter speed so it kind of makes it look like it's the car warping the, the mesh of the fence there's just some really really clever bits of composition in this collection i thought it was really really well done yeah, so, like i do i do like the traffic lights with the balloons yes yep and i like the um the two birds like a dove and a well, it looks like an oh, yeah. dove, but it's black. But but the uh, the contrasting of the dark sky and the white cloud behind it is it's a really nice contrast. So, yeah, just a just a, a really interesting collection of images. So thank you, Paul. Really appreciate yeah, very, that. One. Very, very cleverly spotted. Yeah, totally, totally. And that's me done. So um, I, I just I just have to little sh do a little shout out to Greg Anderson. Oh yeah. Because he commented on this. Apparently, we had a podcast last week. I know nothing about. So yeah, it's that's about right. Some bloke called Anthony, but he made a great comment on the post. I like the photo. Your camera must have a really good photographer. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Which I thought was a, was a fabulous take on things. Yeah, yeah. And, and funny enough, one I've never heard before. So, no. Yeah, that's, awesome. That's great. That's now. Great. I, now I also know Philip Johnson sent something through. Uh, oh, that's right. He sent us a link to the Nick collection. Basically, for Black Friday, they are having a 50% off sale. So if uh, you've ummed and out about whether or not to pick up the Nick collection, and if you and are... And it's fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. The problem is, this won't be going out on Black Friday. Right. No, it, that's the problem. Going for a few days, it's or? going to be a little bit uh, late. Although, yeah, there's a good possibility. It goes up until November the 29th. And okay, it was a, we come out on the 28th or something, don't we? Yeah, so you're going to have about 24 hours to make use of this link. So I will put the link in the show notes for those that uh, haven't seen that already. And thank you, Philip, for uh, bringing that to our attention. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, so there we go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and uh, watch my uh, my uh, cryptocurrency go down. That's oh, right. And hasn't Bitcoin taken a hammering in the last two ooh, weeks? Ooh, they all have. It's going to be like twenty five percent drop in two weeks. Uh, nah, it's only down ten thousand. 
Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's 81,000 at the moment. Oh, right, so it's come up. Okay, so it was down to about 76,000 a couple of days ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and from from a height of ninety two or ninety three, it was yeah. close on a twenty thousand dollar drop, or, or certainly about a twenty percent drop. So yeah, and and hence why I keep saying, you know, it'll never be a valid currency for anything because it's way too volatile. But volatility is what you want. No, it's not. That's how you make money. No, yes. yeah, yeah, it, it is. If as you know when to buy, when to sell, as an investment vehicle, yes, but not as a currency. Well, not as a currency. No, definitely not a currency. Yeah. That's why it was a Bolivia went to crypto as a currency. Yeah. And now they're, yeah, <laughs> Some... one minute the country's worth worth more than America, next thing it's worth <laughs> less, <laughs> less than the, uh, the 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 island off the bottom of New Zealand. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it's called. Yeah. Man. All right, mate. Well, you have a good one. You too. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to and, you in a couple uh, of weeks. We'd just like to apologise for that little bit of useful content in the middle <laughs> of the show. There, uh, we'll yes. try and work better. Try try not to make a habit of it. <laughs> 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 All right, mate. Bye, Talk mate. to you in a couple of weeks. See ya. Bye. You've been listening to Shutters Inc. For questions, comments, and feedback, email the boys at shuttersincpodcast.com.